chair recognizes Representative Hightower to speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oftentimes when I come before you and speak about gun bills, I talk about the Second Amendment and its history in our country and how the Second Amendment was given to, giving to us to allow us to protect ourselves against, if needed, our own government. But I'm not going to go into that today because we all know the Second Amendment very well. What I want to talk to you all about is a shift in the way we think. Our legal system works or is supposed to work on an innocent till proven guilty. And I think we'd all would agree with that. We're innocent until proven guilty. But overall, I think, uh, I think as a society, we've changed. We now are evaluating people on a guilty until proven innocent. And the reason I feel that way is because I sit on judiciary non-civil and I see each year different members coming to us with a new felony here, a new felony there, a mandatory minimum here, a mandatory minimum there, and they're evaluating these bills from we want to catch the worst person. They've already evaluated these bills as if everyone is already evil, everyone's bad, and they want this felony because they want to catch these bad people. But what they don't sometimes do is slow down and evaluate, well, what if an innocent person gets caught up in that legal system? And now you've put on them standard minimums that are keeping them in jail for half of their life. And now they're convicted felons because they're caught up in this system and they're guilty till proven innocent. There's been a paradigm shift in our society, and it's one that we slowly need to tilt back the way it was originally supposed to be. And a bill like this is a prime example of that very issue. We're talking about innocent people protecting themselves, not convicted felons, not people who are guilty of anything, but yet we want to put restrictions on these innocent people. We want to tell them because of these outrageous acts of a few, we're going to limit what you can do. Because these few are guilty of heinous crimes, we're going to hold you all guilty. And we're going to restrict all your rights. That's what we're doing. What this bill does is trying slowly but surely to flip that back around and let you be innocent till proven guilty. I want to allow those innocent individuals to have their rights. I want those innocent individuals to have the ability to protect themselves from those few who are going to commit those heinous crimes. But oftentimes we're scared to do that. We're scared to do that because we're too scared about what the possibility can be because of the acts of those few individuals that commit those heinous crimes. In the national anthem, land of the free and home of the brave. This is an opportunity for us to be brave. Society is telling us over and over, day after day, that we need to be fearful. And the reason we need to be fearful is because guns are bad, because look at all these mass killings. No, what we need to be is brave. We need to be brave enough to trust our fellow citizens that they are innocent at heart that they are innocent until proven guilty, that they are innocent and should have the ability to protect themselves from evil. They should have the ability to protect their home, their wife, their children. And this bill is a step in the right direction. Is it everything that I would have wanted? No. I would have liked to have seen this go a little bit further and allow them to be able to carry them in dorms. But sometimes you take steps to get where you need to be. This bill is a step in the right direction. This bill shows the citizens of Georgia that we trust them. At least those that are willing to do the right thing and go and get their carry permit 
put their fingerprint down, get a background check. We're telling those individuals, we want to trust you. We're going to allow you to be innocent until proven guilty, and we're not going to hold you accountable for the actions of those heinous few. And that's what we're really debating about. And again, I know this is all rooted in the Second Amendment, but y'all have all heard me preach about the Second Amendment. Look at this as a shift to evaluate our citizens from a new place and allow them to have the freedoms to protect themselves. I ask that you vote in favor of HB 859. Thank you. Gentleman has yielded the well. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute the chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. All those opposed to vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 859. The ayes are 113, the nays are 59. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed.